Hello, my name is Michael and I'm here today with another pixel art tutorial for you. We're going to be talking about dithering. We're going to cover what dithering is, why people use it, and how you can use it yourself to create some lovely pixel art. So let's get into it. Put simply, dithering is a term used to describe a method of creating the appearance of colour depth with a limited number of colours. Dithering is taking two different colours and placing them next to each other, mixing them together with different patterns and regularity. Due to the way our eyes work, this tricks our brain into seeing more colours than there actually are. If you've ever seen a GIF made from a movie or TV show where the image is kind of grainy but the colours are still mostly right, that's dithering. Dithering had its heyday in the age of pixel art. Back in the old days, artists had only a limited palette of colours to pick from and you had to make the most of what you had. If you wanted more colour depth than what was possible, then you needed to get creative. For example, if you were creating graphics for the IBM PC back in the mid to late 80s, chances are you would have been using a 16 colour palette thanks to the lovely EGA graphics standard. Now, if these are the colours that you want to use and you don't want to use anything else, then that's all fine and dandy. But what if you wanted to convey colours in between those that you have? What if you wanted to convey subtle detail but didn't have access to colours that were appropriate to do so? Then you had to employ dithering. Some truly wonderful art was created using the limited EGA palette. This example is from the PC adventure Loom. One of my personal favourites in terms of pixel art and dithering with such a limited palette. Now there are many different types of dithering and each can give an image a different feel and a different aesthetic. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at a couple of different styles of dithering and I'm going to use this example image that I've made up here. Currently no dithering on it and I'm going to apply different dithering styles to it and we're going to see what works and what doesn't. Uniform dithering is probably the most strict of the dithering styles. You basically alternate each colour with each pixel and it gives a smooth gradient. Um, it's often very artificial looking because you're very strict in how you apply it. It can be used to great effect for smooth objects like cylinders and things like that or to give an art style a sci-fi or clean look. Probably not really the best choice for organic designs quite like this with the, the grass and the rock features and that sort of thing, but it can look great in combination with some of the other techniques. Pattern dithering is one of the more um, creative dithering styles you'll see. So pattern dithering uses repeating patterns of different complexity, sometimes many of them in combination with each other. And they use this to not only blend the two colours together in a gradient, but also to add texture and detail to the work. You can get very creative with pattern dithering and some fantastic results can be achieved with this technique. You'll notice here it works great on the sky and larger areas. Not so well on the statue and the rock formation, I've got to admit. It's kind of hard to squeeze it in there. Random dithering. This is one of my personal favourites and I use this for Bannerman generally with a bit of uniform in there. Random dithering relies on scattering the pixels randomly throughout the image. So this gives a very um, chaotic and noisy image. The noisiness of the image can be both a blessing and a curse. It can help you add detail to objects, but too many randomly scattered pixels can really start to impact the visual quality because it just looks noisy after a while.
Alright, so which one is best? Well, it's kind of a cop-out, but there is no best. It comes down to what style appeals to you. You can employ these techniques in combination, and that can often be the best way to go. You can use pattern dithering for the sky, random dithering for the clothing on your characters, and then more of a uniform dithering for the background. Only will playing around help you find the technique that matches your creative style and suits your overall project. Now this is actually pretty important. Dithering came about originally because we did, just did not have the amount of colours available for what we wanted to do. Now we have millions of colours to choose from. You just crack open the colour wheel and you go to town. But some people like myself enjoy the practice of working within a purposely restricted colour palette. I enjoy the challenges it brings, and I love the grainy, gritty look of dithered pixel art, where the pixels make up the overall image, but the dithering can leave some of the finer parts of detail to the imagination a bit. One tip I will give here is please be very careful about purposely using dithering when your colour palette has hundreds of colours within it. I'd say generally pick one, either a massive colour palette with every colour you need or a limited palette with dithering, but your mileage may vary. Well that will about do us, I hope you found this video interesting and hopefully you can get some use out of it as well if you're playing around with pixel art at the moment. If you're new to the channel you might want to check out some of my other tutorials, I'll have more coming up in the future as well. And if you're also interested in the process of making an indie video game from start to finish, you might want to check out the video series Just Make Game which is also on the channel as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.